the debacle that involves the fashion industry. It's weird, isn't it? You wouldn't have thought. <sighs> how do you, how do you approach this one? I guess there's a segment of the creative class, right? Of the creative scene, fashion design, streetwear, photography, modeling. There's a segment of that uh, group that are quite politically active, right? We know the ones that are on social, always talking about whatever's going on in the news, urging people to vote. There's a small segment of people that kind of do that. But for the most part, people try and people tend to stay away from the hot button topics, you know, through fear of alienating the customer base or just through fear of just saying the wrong thing, which I completely understand. I don't think it's anyone's prerogative who has a position where they're essentially required to report to different they're, they're basically accountable to different entities. It's not maybe within their purview to step out and say things unless maybe, you know, they're as serious as the George Floyd situation. But for the most part, I don't assess, I don't expect hot takes, informed um, opinions, um, whatever it may be from these people who are following in that creative design fashiony cultural scene that's not what i that, that's not where i got that's not what draws me to them what draws me to them is the product products they produce maybe the interviews they do and whatever else they're able to kind of uh give back to the culture or contribute to the culture that's what i'm basically going to them for if i want any kind of information that's outside of that i go to the experts in their uh, respected fields but i don't get my worldview uh, from these people for the most part because they're fallible just like i am and because they don't really have expertise in the things that i'm looking for it is what it is and it? it's not a big deal but i guess this situation the george floyd um death has touched people in such a strong way and it's such a black and white issue for the most part again you know talking about what mike freeman says there's other evidence out there but for the most part it's a pretty black and white issue um it should be pretty easy if you are compassionate if you actually do give a shit for you to kind of articulate yourself in a way that people can understand the pain you're going through the confusion of what you're feeling and for you to kind of offer some kind of relief in the midst of what's going on for some people and again not for me right i don't necessarily go for them for relief i don't give a shit what they have to say but i guess for some people they would like that right just to kind of feel a little bit like okay cool he or she gets it but when they don't it really does sting doesn't it because you build these people up as heroes you think they're your friends you think they're your mentors and you want and yeah, if you're if they're your mentors you'd want to kind of follow them you kind of want to follow their lead in certain things that they do outside of the what they produce right just in their kind of everyday life you might have the same views that they have on family and friendship um love whatever it may be so when they do things that kind of jar you or kind of um uh surprise you in some way so it, not, not maybe a surprise but are unexpected i can understand why it's disappointing but i'm here to tell you that you should not you should be very careful about the people that you idolize um and for the most part you should be able to try you should try and practice the art of separating the person and the what they produce they're not all in the same some people are shitty human beings but they make really great things some people make really horrible things but they're really great human beings you should have to separate the both and then decide then who what you want to follow what you want to champion but don't think that just because a person um, seems cool appears safe that they're actually a cool person because most of the time they're not unfortunately it is what it is isn't it um we can't we all can't be cool guys i guess in that regard but i guess this virgil abloh situation is a really good indication of said issue um so number one i guess you have what kind of spurred this whole situation because it's really really bizarre that he got number one got himself involved because he's not really the most political person anyway um but essentially he did kind of rear his head into the conversation so as i mentioned previously in other podcasts i think part of the part of the reason why people get cancelled i think especially people or mostly celebrities right um the reason why people get cancelled usually is because people don't like you anyway right so people don't like you so they look for any kind of reason to cancel you and get you off your platform take you off your perch um, counsel you whatever it may be called right they just don't want to hear from you ever again so they look for any reason any reason you give them they're going to take it and run so you have to be very very careful about the things you post or very aware because 
I think if you're if you're somebody that's not liked on social, you there's probably you probably an understanding. You probably know that you're not liked. You have an understanding that okay, people don't really like me. The sentiment out there is that I'm a bit of a dickhead. So you have to be very cautious about the things you do. You must have you have to be. There's no way you can be willfully ignorant of that. Um, so you have to really watch your p's and q's. Now, in the case of Virgil, I'd say personally again this is my own personal point of view i've worked with a guy previously in a in a in a previous life right i was working for a company and we did some few projects with him and i had some really dodgy interactions with him right interactions that would lead me to not like him as a person but i like the work he does right um it's not necessarily my place to really speak on the issues and really um explain them because i don't that's not necessarily something that i do i'm not that kind of person i'd rather keep that stuff private but as a human being i've never really rated him anyway right so I'm not surprised by what's happened but I guess for the people that you know have not really seen this side of Virgil it's all kind of a bit of a shock to the system but it's very well it's a very well known fact in the industry in the scene that he's not a well liked person people just don't like him for whatever reason I don't know what their reasons are I have mine people have their own but I guess in his to cut him some bail he's been very good in the idea he's been very good with how he's kind of navigated the industry because there's maybe maybe there's an acceptance or understanding that he's kind of been you know lucky in this fact that he's able to align himself or stand next to one of the most influential cultural figures you know in the last whatever many years in Kanye West that's essentially give, afforded him some opportunities and opened him some doors but he's you know most of the success that he's had has been purely down to his hard work right he's an insanely um hard working individual um and he's essentially been able to put himself in a position where he's now an artistic director at louis vuitton menswear he's got his own brand in off-white that's really doing big things and he's got great nike collaborations under his belt so he's absolutely smashing it but i think along his journey he has also understood or come to realization that you know most of the way most of the reason why he's got to where he's got to is because of his network as most creative people out there will know a lot of the reasons for success of some rather than others is mostly due to you know timing and the people that are around you they can really help you navigate um up the ranks and get you where you need to get to but he's been very smart in that he's surrounded himself with really cool influential people who have kind of insulated him i'd say from some level of criticism but also helped him to kind of establish himself in the scene which has been great i think that's something that you definitely can't um say it's a negative and for the people that are closest to him you also have to be fair to Virgil and say he does provide opportunities to everyone that is friends or is associated with him he's given chances to giving them looks shout them out on instagram you know the kind of stuff that doesn't really seem it seems into inconsequential it doesn't seem that important but if you're involved in that scene and you want to get around and you want to get up up and about and get some exposure if he's able to you know to at you in a story put you in a post comment on something you did on instagram it does go a long way in terms of how you're perceived in the industry um and he's been very smart and very generous with um his uh clout in that respect right he's out there giving people clout tokens which is very very cool thing to do but aside from that you know there's not much else to write about in it when it comes to his product and how he conducts himself the things he says in the interviews the fact that he loves to do this you know word soup thing where he tries to in you know where, he, where you can explain something in one paragraph he takes up four you know uses big words just to sound more intelligent all these really weird things that make you think like what is this guy hiding who's he trying to be instead of what is he who is he really right it just kind of makes you a bit confused so i guess with this i guess um in an effort to, to look like he's a good guy right which is always a bad thing to do um he decided to share a screenshot of this post that he of somebody i guess shared with him where um it looks like he's only donated fifty dollars to the fund uh to the fund that's supporting kids that are getting bailed out during the um the riots that are happening at the moment. So this is a screenshot post on Twitter and it said if Virgil cared about black community, he would have donated more than fifty dollars. And the screenshot says the following here is a screenshot from Virgil it says the Miami community in the crazy inspired I'm crazy inspired for kids in the streets that needed bail funds for George Floyd protest. And it said he sent 50 pounds to the Femme Power, I think, organization. And he says he's matching the local energy from the list of people there. Now, if you look, if you're honest, even again, someone that's not a fan of the guy, what he's doing is is basically sharing a post that he's been obviously tagged in or sent, you know, someone maybe DM'd him and he's matching whatever the person donated. So I'm assuming it's some kind of, you know, hey, we're going to make this fun for people that have been protesting to support them. Maybe it's something that's specifically 
a, um, a fund specifically set up for uh, black kids who have been protesting, black females, whatever it is, right? Someone donated $50, he matches it, and then he shares it in hopes for three dollar friends to do the same. But the optics of it look really nuts because I think early in the day, he made a post where he basically bemoaned the fact that people were protesting and rioting in the streets and breaking up stores and smashing merchandise and shit right so that basically set people up and made them really get angry so let me see if i can find a post here i think this is the one in it right da, 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 da. and then the other one uh Sean Weatherspoon. so yeah so I guess before people saw that post of fifty dollars, they got really angry because he got really upset when he saw images of his shop RSVP, which I'm sh I'm not sure if he still owns or if he's part of it or if he just you know they're they're just family, and of course round two the store owned by Sean Weatherspoon you know famous for the Nike Air Max One ninety seven collaboration, so he got on his high horse about you know kids should hide hide their head in shame or something. Let me see if I can find a post and read it because it was fucking ludicrous. So this is his post right. Um, responding to the image of Sean Weatherspoon's store getting ransacked during the riots. And it says the following, case in point at 81, why I said streetwear is dead. You know, and if, straight away, you know, you're a wanker, you know, jog off. Um, this hashtag 81, what as if we've been keeping a log of all of his points regarding why streetwear is dead. It's just nonsense. And then he goes, continue, said streetwear without the quest quotation marks is a community. It's a group of friends that have common bond. We hang out on the street corners, fight with each other and fight for each other. Okay, I don't know what he's talking about there. Attached streetwear with the quotation marks is a detachment to the above. When have you ever heard Virgil delineate between quotation marks streetwear and, and non-quotation marks streetwear? What have you ever heard him say that? When he originally said that streetwear is dead comment, he said it because he essentially finally felt like he was accepted in the fashion circles, from what I interpret it again. He got his, he got accepted to the, into the fashion crew um, with a capital F, as he um, annoyingly always refers to. And he wanted to be, you know, and I think this is off the back of that Truman Show uh, collection that he did where he kind of, you know, inserted a lot of tailoring, you know, loads of really badly fitting clothes that weren't really cut properly. So in order to kind of push away from where he's come from and what kind of given him the level of popularity that he's kind of, you know, able to build on, he wanted to kind of move away from that. He, you know, decided to pull out the statement street where he's dead in order to kind of really um, align himself with the resurgence of tailoring that the fashion elites were trying to push towards us because effectively in my opinion again I think that whole tailoring is back movement was a sort of dog whistle to get all the blacks all the people of color out of fashion because we were taking over we were all over the street style blogs we were all over the front row of the shows all the those cool girls were getting all the good jobs and shit and being featured in all the cool magazines they wanted to bring back some sort of level of I don't know normality and order to the fashion scene right they didn't want all these crazy weird looking people to be taking over their hallowed industry so they decided to push this narrative that tailoring is back right as in no more hoodies no more trainers get the blacks out of our kind of our room cool so he wants to be part of that and says you know what streetwear is dead I'm with tailoring now but he never explained it this way he never did this is all revisionism for sure because I'm I, I definitely paid attention to the stuff that he says unfortunately and it continues here. Streetwear with the quotation marks is yelling uh, and shop staff staring fights at line starting for what is yelling and shop staff. I don't even know how this even makes sense. Guy can't write to save shit. Streetwear is yelling and shop staff starting from fights in lineups defaming us because we didn't get enough pairs of shoes because everyone can't get a pair. No, you, you and your crony amount of friends are, are the ones that basically perpetuate this, right? They get this... <laughs> it's really funny right they love eschewing this idea that they're for the kids but all i see from these groups of people is them essentially honey dicking kids right into wanting a lifestyle that most of them are probably not going to be able to attain teasing them with sneakers they're probably not going to be able to get and making them uh, have mad amount of FOMO because they weren't able to attend some uh, zine launch somewhere in some ranch shackled art gallery in the middle of LA that's all they do 
right? So they make these kids prioritize and fetishize material items. Then when these same kids decide to take advantage of chaos and ransack all your shop for those said items that you have put on the pedestal, you now are telling me that I am, uh, what you call it, um, that I'm, I'm in the wrong. That somehow, because I'm uh, ascribing to the street with the quotation marks. You're the one that popularized the quotation marks, Mr. Friend. What are you talking about? And again, it continues. Street without quotation marks is a group of friends that I'm sure, that I'm surely was like, this guy's writing is mad. Streetwear is a group of friends that I'm surely was like, come on guys, this is Sean's store. We don't, can't treat him like this. We know Sean. Like, what the fuck is he talking about? Like for real, what is he talking about? Is he, does he somehow think that the kids that were ransacking Sean Weatherspoon's store came from out of state? Does he think that? Does he not think that anyone that was ransacking his store didn't know who he was? Does he not think they just took advantage of the situation and ransacked it? And he's talking uh, about Sean Weatherspoon as if they're like boys and best friends. Are you best friends because you say hi to him when you go to Bread and Bar or to some showroom somewhere? You're not friends. <sighs> Streetwear again is a culture. Streetwear with the quotation marks is a commodity. Streetwear with the quotation marks is the need. As I need this t shirt or pairs of shoes by any means necessary. But you created that by any means necessary motif. What are you like? This guy is insane. So, anyway, that, that was a statement that he made that made people get a bit angry. So, I guess the reply from Sean Weatherspoon is what really set people off because. Sean Weatherspoon himself wasn't even that pissed off about the his store getting around. Of course, I'm sure I'm sure privately behind closed doors he must be of you know really livid about what's going on. But in terms of the context of the situation and the severity of the issue at hand, losing a pair of shoes or losing a few pairs of shoes and loads of countless amounts of you know um, garments that are probably you know priceless isn't necessarily you know you can't compare that to a human life. And if he's and if this is a moment where systemic change is going to be enacted. Wouldn't you want to be on a, I won't say right side of history, but what would you much rather have, you know, all your stock in place or be able to change things for the better so that we don't ever have another George Floyd situation happen again? I know what option I'll choose. So he decides to reply and he made a pretty um, salient point, actually, considering how a lot of people on the interwebs don't seem to like Sean Weatherspoon either, which, you know, goes for maybe a deeper issue about what people who people they actually like well I can't, I can't find it oh, someone must have deleted his take 